Hello everyone. Today I'm going to introduce you to the meteorites of Oregon. So what is a meteorite? Well, the story starts in space. A meteoroid is basically an object in space that would become a meteor if it entered Earth's atmosphere. As you can imagine, then, a meteor is when this object is in Earth's atmosphere, somewhere between space and the ground. If it lands, and not all of them do, then it becomes a meteorite, which hopefully gets recovered. A meteorite is classified as a fall if it was observed to fall, or if not, like this meteorite from Antarctica that was recovered just sitting on a glacier, then it's a find. And outweighing meteorites by several orders of magnitude is the category of meteor wrongs, as in not a meteorite. Uh, in this case, bubbly slag glass, which has it looks kind of weird. It's pretty heavy for its size, so it's frequently mistaken for meteorites if you find it out in the woods somewhere. Now, meteorites are a record of planet formation environments and solar system processes. Some of the first condensates in the solar system were these things called chondrules, which you can think of as uh, small spheres of dust that melted at some point before joining together into a meteoroid. These primitive materials started accreting into rubble piles, and those that gained enough mass experienced some internal heating, which could lead to low temperature thermal and or aqueous alteration. Larger masses produced interior melt, and differentiation for the largest. And all along this process, we get snapshots from the different types of meteorites that we find on Earth, from chondrites to iron meteorites, palisites, stony meteorites. And there's a couple other ones that aren't in that, uh, that list there. So here's a Google Earth composite of Oregon overlaid with locations of all the meteorites in the state. Now you note that meteorites tend to be found in areas where there's you know, more people like those ones closer to Portland, or like the Morrow County, which is found in farmland, much like many of the iron meteorites of Washington State. The different label types mean different things, and we're going to first talk briefly about these two marked with an X, Molino and Port Orford. And so these are the not-quite-right meteorites. The X on that label meant that the meteorites either aren't meteorites or were not from where the finder said they were from. The Port Orford meteorite, which is a palisite, which is a mixture of iron and olivine, uh, that was allegedly found east of Port Orford in 1856 during an expedition for a railroad route. The finder reportedly discovered an 11-ton palisite, which is huge, of which he turned over a few small fragments as proof. In the photo, this fragment weighs about 24 grams or less than an ounce. And as you can imagine, an 11-ton meteorite drew lots of meteorite hunters and even some you know, Smithsonian and museum-backed expeditions that went searching for this massive meteorite, uh, but none were successful. And it's much more likely that the stone was a fragment of the Chilean meteorite Imalac that this finder passed, tried to pass off as a new meteorite, and that the, this guy acquired the fragments during a trip to during his trip to Oregon, when he went down around the ocean through Panama, which, you know, back in 1856, that was the way to go. And Molino, which I can't find a photo of, is supposedly a very small chondrite that reportedly fell May 24th, 1927. But, you know, there are no other reports of a fall that day, and it's actually in the Smithsonian Archive somewhere, and is currently classified as a doubtful stone meaning that it may not be a meteorite. Okay, back to the real meteorites. I think we'll start with the two labeled OC, which stands for Ordinary Chondrites. Now that's in the north of Oregon, in Morrow County, and Salem. The Morrow County meteorite is a type L6 ordinary chondrite. What does that mean? Well, the L in L6 means it has a low iron content for meteorites. And the 6 refers to an alteration scale which goes from 1 to 6, with 6 being the most altered. This alteration actually happened before it ever arrived on Earth. So if we go back to our quick reference here, Morrow County is a type L6 ordinary chondrite, so that's on the 
left side of the scale there. And spoiler, actually, Salem is too. Now this means that they came from fairly primitive bodies, but there was enough mass to have this internal heating that I mentioned. And it's enough to homogenize mineral compositions, but there's no melting. So it's kind of on the cusp of becoming this, you know, magma ocean capable planetary body. It's like a planetesimal. Now the single meteorite mass of Morrow County was found by a farmer in the county in 1999, but it wasn't formally described until 2010. It has since found a home at the Race Museum uh, down in Oregon, west of Portland. In this photo of the, from the museum, you can see a slice has been taken off, and that wasn't just to show the inside better, but actually for identification, and because at least part of the deal with describing meteorites is that some of it has to be housed at a repository like an institution or a museum, typically where it was identified in the first place. I'm not sure if that slice is at like the Cascadia Meteorite Laboratory or maybe even Rice Northwest Museum, I'm not sure. Uh, but you, in the interior of the sample, you can see some color variation, and that's from the different minerals and the different uh, chondrules in there. Now, the Salem meteorite, as I mentioned, is also a type L6 ordinary chondrite, like Morrow County. It has a slightly different history, though. Uh, Deputy Sheriff Price and another deputy heard the pieces actually strike the roof of Price's house. And they went out, to, and this was like 1 a.m., they went out and recovered still warm fragments. Price still owns the fragments, apparently. And what I think is cool is that actually Price had a history of studying physics, and he recognized that the fusion crust was a fusion crust, and that it came from a meteorite. And so he didn't just, you know, didn't just disregard these as dirty rocks or you know something that the neighbor chucked at his house. Now uh, this is the only fall in Oregon, and you know fall, as I mentioned, usually means that you know, one or more people saw the meteorite trail, and then shortly after pieces were recovered, you know, they kind of tracked where it would have landed, and then people went out and searched. Uh, in this case, the meteorite was only heard, but it was quickly recovered and identified as a meteorite. And unlike Morrow County, which weighed in at about 40 pounds, the Salem meteorite is only 61 grams, or, you know, a few ounces total. And that's, you know, one of the benefits of having a fall is that you can recover these very small samples because you basically see it land, or more or less. But, I mean, can you imagine the likelihood of recognizing these, you know, gravel-sized pieces if you just walked by them on a trail? Uh, so anyway, the rest of the Oregon meteorites are iron meteorites, uh, which makes sense, really, that most in the state are iron meteorites, and that's because they're more likely to survive long enough to be discovered. And, you know, they kind of look different if they're not too covered with stuff. Typically, if it's a different kind of meteorite, like, a, you know, the ordinary chondrites or something a little more fragile, you need to either see it fall, like with the Salem, or have it be large enough to survive, like the Morrow County, uh, which in the Morrow County case was also helped by the arid environment of the northeastern region. So the four iron meteorites that have been found in Oregon are all fines rather than falls, and so they were all lying on or in the ground for X number of years before they were recovered. I'll run through them in this order, saving Willamette, the United States' largest meteorite, till last. And by the way, it is easy to find any described meteorite online by searching the Meteoritical Bulletin Database, which is run by the Meteoritical Society. And you can go to this website and search by every conceivable combination of properties, like where it's found, when, what country it was in, etc. And this is the start for Fitzwater Pass, which lists a good overview of what's known about the meteorite, so it's not an observed fall. And further down would be a description of, and photos, if there are any. So Fitzwater Pass is a nickel-iron meteorite of the rare Type 3F, weighing it at only 65 grams, or about 2.3 ounces. The meteorite was actually found by a rockhound back in 1974, and thought to be a piece of nickel ore for many years. And it wasn't until 2006 that it found its way to the Cascadia Meteorite Laboratory where they identified it. It's an octahedrite, which means that it would have that classic Vidmannstaaten pattern of, you know, that crisscrossing uh, camasite, taenite, blebs of nickel-iron metal, if you were to slice it and etch it appropriately. On the left, that metallic interior is revealed, and that's what was first used to identify it as a, you know, nickel ore. That's the original spot. 
And then the slice on the right was done by the Cascadia Meteor Meteorite Laboratory, maybe for analysis. So the Klamath Falls meteorite was, as you might imagine, found somewhere in Klamath County. It is also a type 3F iron meteorite, like Fitzwater Pass. It's interesting that these meteorites were found in relatively close proximity, considering how rare the type 3F meteorites are. You know, maybe there are more in that area to discover. Was it a coincidence? Was it a strewn field? Uh, anyways, uh, one of the interesting things about this meteorite is that it was found in 1952 by a resident who brought it in for identification, but then they never returned to pick up their meteorite, which can you imagine forgetting about it? Or I don't know, maybe something happened. And so because of that, the exact location of its discovery was never revealed. Sam's Valley is the um, third of four iron meteorites. And what I like about Sam's Valley, which is a type 3 AB, is that it was first discovered in 1894, then in 1938, and again in 1949. Now, I don't mean that they kept losing it or checking it out the window and making new notes. Multiple fragments were discovered over those years, and they were identified many years apart. The 15-pound figure I noted above is for the original mass, and the other stones have been in the you know, one to two pound range. Actually, one of the fragments that was discovered later had actually been in a museum's collection for decades, and it was from an 18, 1880s, I believe, or 1890s prospector that found these things and donated them to, them to the museum, but they weren't identified as meteorites until, you know, five decades later or whatever it was. And so it may be worth your while to go where something's already been found. Uh, you know, perhaps this is a strewn field like the Canyon Diablo meteorite, and maybe there's other iron meteorites of this type waiting to be discovered down there. Now, saving the biggest for last, we have, of course, the Willamette meteorite. It's certainly the most famous meteorite from Oregon and one of the most well-known meteorites in the world because it has been displayed at the American Museum of Natural History for over a century. I think 102 years this year. And long before that, it was recognized as a visitor from the sky by the Clackamas, who named it Tamanoas. And long before that, the meteorite first arrived somewhere further north in like Montana or British Columbia, and was later most likely ice rafted during the ice age to its present location. It's really kind of wild to think about it being part of the Missoula floods history, in part because, you know, this 15 ton meteorite was, you know, carried by ice several hundred miles. And it really, I think, helps drive home just how much stuff was in those floods. And, you know, it really makes sense then that they, you know, scoured out the channeled scablands of Washington. And actually, ice transport is a crucial phenomenon for the Antarctic Meteorite Survey, which uses that to find meteorites. Many of their meteorites in Antarctica are found in or near moraines as the ice kind of acts as a conveyor belt, bringing these meteorites to their final destination. So there are kind of these unusual deep pits in the meteorite, and they're not formed from entry into Earth's atmosphere. You know, some of them may be, but they've been eroded a lot more since then. And that's because the meteorite is actually, was actually dissolving itself as rainwater interacted with sulfur minerals to create sulfuric acid that, you know, etched into weak points and further eroded those regmaglyphs or uh, entry pits. And you can see they're big enough to fit kids in there. So if you're interested in learning more about Oregon's and other nearby meteorites, there is a great article in a 1999 volume of Oregon Geology. Uh, but keep in mind, it only goes up to 1999, and there have been discoveries and falls since then. There is also every official meteorite to find in the Meteoritical Bulletin database, as I mentioned earlier, and that will have the most up-to-date information on meteorites. But whether you go looking for meteorites in your backyard or online, Happy hunting.